screeching, you fill my heart with songs of praise. Only you can, only you can. Jesus, you're the only reason that I'm even breathing. I am wide awake. My heart beats only for your glory. My hands reach up for you to hold me. My soul sings for you to hold me. My feet dance to your rhythm, to your rhythm. Every beat is calling, every beat is calling out your name. wanted to say hi before we jumped into worship and today's lesson. Um, we wanted to play a really quick game. I'm going to ask Madeline to close her eyes and cover them up like she has no sight, so she can't see. Can you do that, please? Yeah. Okay, she's got her eyes closed. I'm going to put a box in front of me. She does not know what color it is, and then I'm going to try to explain to her the color, and we'll see if she can figure it out. Okay, we're just going with the solid color here, okay? You guys see it? All right, Madeline. Try to guess this. It is, um, it is the color of some rocks. Um, Look, getting close. Wait. Uh, it's silver? the color of rocks sometimes. Silver. No. Nice try. Let me try again. Um, it's the color of some people's hair. That's okay if you don't know. Let me try another one. This one might help you out. It's the color of tires on a car. What? Good job, she got it, good job. But you guys see how hard that was? She couldn't see, so I had to try to explain it to her and see if she could guess. Um, so in today's lesson, we're gonna learn about a man named Saul, and he lost his sight instantly. Ah. Madeline, so we're gonna say bye, and we'll see you guys after the lesson, okay? Bye. Hey everybody, I'm Erica, and welcome to my summer Lab. Today, I'm challenging myself to some optical illusions. <laughs> Dizzy yet? And you know what these tricky little eye puzzles require? A whole lot of faith! Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So, let's give it a go! Whoa, that is wild. Wanna see? Does it look like the circles are moving? But they aren't, it's a still photo. 
The way the gray and the black and the white are used makes it look like it's moving. <laughs> Crazy, right? Do I look like I'm moving? Now, this one is easy. Okay, which of these objects is bigger than the other? Object A. Duh. <sighs> All right. Wait. Object A. Right? Ob Wait a second. Wait a second. They're, they're, the, they're the same size. I'm so shocked right now. I'm so shocked right now. Okay. Sometimes what we think we see is not what's real. And when we discover the truth, it can be shocking. <gasps> huh. Today's story is all about a guy named Saul who thought he knew it was true, but he was in for a big shock. Let's check it out. <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. If anyone was set up for the good life, it was Saul of Tarsus. Greetings. Though Saul's family was Jewish, he was also born a Roman citizen. Throughout his life, he was known by two different names. You may call me Saul or Paul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with the famous Rabbi Gamaliel. Let's see. You have achieved 100% in classical literature, 111% in philosophy, and in ethics, 99%. Oh. Oh, I vow to do better. Saul became a Pharisee like his father before him. He carefully studied God's law and prayed three times a day. Dear God, help me follow your laws 100% perfectly. Like the other religious leaders in Jerusalem though, Saul was caught off guard by the events that surrounded the life and death of Jesus. Good riddance. Now that fool can't try to overturn God's laws anymore. Haven't you heard? Jesus' follower says he's returned to life. They've seen Jesus? They've seen Jesus. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, those riffraff will slink away soon enough. Against all odds, the followers of Jesus didn't fade away. In fact, the numbers began to grow. Five thousand? You're telling me that 5,000 people are following the way of a dead man? Well, technically, they think he's alive. Ugh, not helping. The religious leaders in Jerusalem did everything they could to squash the new movement. They even arrested a leader among the Jesus followers named Stephen. After telling lies about him, they dragged him outside the city. This man is a disgrace. Saul stood by and held the coats of the men who picked up stones and threw them at Stephen until they killed him. If Stephen had just let go of this Jesus nonsense, he wouldn't have had to die. It's terrible. I heard people are following the way of Jesus in other cities too. What? Inconceivable. Saul quickly became known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. When he discovered that some Jews in Damascus were following Jesus, he went straight to the high priest. Ah, this Jesus thing is spreading everywhere. I'm aware. They think he's alive. Hashtag, yup. Someone should do something. I hope you have something constructive to say. Give me letters to the synagogues in Damascus so I can arrest all the believers and bring them back here. Now you're talking. Saul set off for Damascus with the blessing of the high priest. He traveled with a group of men to arrest the believers they found. After days on the road, they neared the city. There it is. We'll make it by lunch. No, we must take time to pray. As he did three times every day, Saul stopped and turned to Jerusalem to pray. Certain God was on his side. Dear Lord, 
help me to catch every single one of those despicable Jesus people. Suddenly, a light more brilliant than the midday sun blazed down around Saul. He staggered, fell to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut against the glare. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul gasped. It felt as though the whole earth shifted beneath him. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. The men around Saul stared in horror and confusion, unable to speak. They could see no one, but heard a sound, perhaps like a roar of thunder. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Saul reeled. He struggled to his feet and finally opened his eyes. He saw nothing, only darkness. What? What's happened? You tell us. We saw the light, and you fell, and this sound, and then you said- I can't see. What? I can't see. I've been blinded. Uh, that's not good. Here, take my hand. Saul grasped the man's hand and shuffled a few steps forward. Who are you talking to? I. I think, I think it was Jesus. You heard Jesus? I heard Jesus. Saul's companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street. Uh, want something to eat? I'm not hungry. Or water? Not thirsty. For three days, Saul wrestled with himself and God. He'd come face to face with the very man he knew was dead, but discovered that Jesus was very much alive. Now blind, Saul was forced to see everything in a brand new light. Okay, there's supposedly a picture of a dinosaur hidden in this image. I don't... Focus, 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 focus! Okay, I'll just have to have faith that there's a dinosaur in this picture because I do not see it. Speaking of, Saul literally couldn't see after his encounter with Jesus, but in a way, he could see better than he ever had before. Anyway, Saul saw everything. And Jesus made a way for everybody to be saved from their sins. After Jesus went back to heaven, he gave his followers the Holy Spirit. And then many more people believed in Jesus too. Saul wanted to stop the Jesus followers. And he really tried, <laughs> but Jesus wanted Saul to know a better way. You know, it's amazing how God has revealed himself to people all throughout history. Saul, who is also known as Paul, so Saul and Paul are actually Saul Paul, was no exception, and neither are you. Just like God opened Saul's eyes to see the truth, he can open our eyes too. He may not appear to you in a bright light, but God can get your attention in all kinds of ways, like through nature, <sighs> or a conversation with a friend. That's really good. I like that. You're so wise. A song on the radio. God can even use your own circumstances to help you know him. And when you focus in and really see Jesus for who he is, the savior of the world, it can change how you see everything. So. That's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see everything. It's like Jesus gives us brand new glasses to see out of. I can't really see out of these ones, but um, it's a different way to see. So that's exciting. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, that's all I got for this week. Oh, perfect. These coffee beans want to wave goodbye to you. Hey, it's good to see you guys again. Wasn't that a great lesson about Saul? We got to see Saul's life completely transformed. You see, he used to think that he knew everything, but then he came face to face with a man that he thought was dead, Jesus. And we learned that knowing Jesus helps us see things differently. And so um, I just pray that we want to know Jesus and we seek after the different ways that we can know him so that we can see things differently in our lives too. So this month's verse is Hebrews 11.1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for 
it's being sure of what we do not see. So um, let's just remember that verse this week when um, there's things that we don't see and we want to and we want to be reminded that, you know, faith is being sure of what we hope for. We put our hope in Jesus. So let's pray today um, to close. All right. Close your eyes, Matt. We're going to pray. Dear God, we are so thankful for the different ways that you um, allow us to know Jesus, you know, through prayer, through talking to you, through fellowshipping with others, and through um, seeing your creation, the creation that you made, and many other ways. And I just pray that you um, help us this week see the different ways that we can know Jesus and see our lives differently. And we pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. I hope you guys have a good week. I Bye. Mommy. This is my faith. This is my focus. All of my days. I know where my hope is. I live it loud. I shout the chorus. Because I know, oh, you're always for us. And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you. I will believe, believe. And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you. I will believe. And keep on I'll keep on looking